Hey guys, Jason here from Timber Falls, home for CNC creators like you. Welcome to Maker Plus Mastery, the Shape and Create series, where we take a deep dive into Carfco Maker Plus to bring your creative projects to life. In each episode, we'll be exploring a new tool or technique to teach you the fundamentals to the finer points of relief creation within Carfco Maker Plus. Whether you're here to master a specific skill or just here to see what's possible, you're in the right place. In today's episode, we're going to be going over the Extrude tool found in Maker Plus. I'm going to start by creating a star. We're going to create a few other shapes. I'm going to create an arc. I want to make a smaller arc. I'm going to use the square tool. I'm going to make a little square here. And I'm using my node editor to edit and cut this in half. I'll show you why I'm doing this all in just a second. The reason I'm creating these other small little shapes is these are going to be the shapes of our profiles. In our last episode, we covered the shape editor tool. The shape editor is kind of like the flood fill for vectors using shapes. Or using a closed vector, you're able to flood fill that vector vector with an entire shape. The extrude tool is sort of like the profile of shapes. So instead of flood filling the vector, we're actually just going to profile the vector. Now because I had that star shape selected when we opened the tool, it's automatically picked this as the drive rail. You can always change what drive rail by selecting a vector and then hitting the drive rail select button over here. Now it's important to know that these drive rails have a direction. The A designates the starting point of the drive rail and these little arrows show the direction that the drive rail runs. When I pick this star over here and I select the drive rail you'll notice that the A is in this corner and that is our starting node and it runs around and then this is the finishing node of this drive rail. The way the extrude tool works is by selecting a drive rail or a vector that we're going to profile, the next three options in this tool are the shapes that we're going to use. Now the one that you're gonna use the most is the start profile and this is the overall shape that we're going to give this line. If I pick this arc here and I select that as my start profile, then it's going to profile this vector in the shape of my arc. Now, at the moment, it has it set to the inside of that vector. Up here, you have the option to also select the outside of the vector. And if we use the outside of the vector, you can see it makes the corners more rounded. Now, you can select this button down at the bottom to create square corners, and it will create square corners on the outside of the shape. If we go back to the inside, it will try and make square corners on the inside of the shape, whereas you can also have those rounded off here at the points. You can also use the center line or make it the center line. Uh, again, you can have it select round or square corners, and that's what makes this a great profile shape tool because the shape of your profile is the actual shape that runs around this. Now each one of these nodes controls the shape from the start to the finish of the shape. And what I mean is if I grab one of these nodes and I move it outwards, you can see that by changing the size of our arc, we are changing the size of this profile arc. If I grab the middle, I can change the height of that profile arc or the shape of that profile arc. Because we're using the center line, as I move either one of the start or finish nodes, we're affecting it from the center point. If we're using the inside or outside, let's keep those square on, it will affect the shape from that node. So you're affecting either the inside of the shape or the outside of the shape. I'm gonna pick this square at the bottom and select this as our start profile. Now you can see because I have a more angular shape that we can control the angles or the shape of our star. And by making this smaller, we can make that shape smaller. You can control the shape of these angles by moving this center node 
in and out. And you can do different shapes that will give you even in the recessed or the positive. You also have this button here that will invert the curve that will automatically switch this back and forth between a positive or negative relief. And this is all using the start node or start profile. Now the in profile and the Z modulation profile, when using these two options, it works best if you're using an open vector as your drive rail. And the reason for this is because the in profile and the Z modulation change the shape between the start and end node. And if you do that on a closed vector, I'm just going to pick this as our drive rails. I'm going to have the arc as our main start profile. And then I'm going to select this square as our end profile. Now what this does is this divides our shape in half. The first half of it is going to have the shape of our start profile. And the last half of it is going to have the shape of our end profile. So in this example, we're starting off with a round shape, but we're ending with a square shape. Now it attempts to blend these two together and the blending happens about halfway through although these two effects can sort of bleed over into the other side i said this works best on an open vector because the transition is a lot easier to see you can see we started off at the round profile and we've ended with that square profile now i'm going to select this last vector down here and we're going to use this for our Z modulation. Now what the Z modulation does is this changes the height from our start profile to our end profile. And this is regulated by the length of our shape down here. So depending on how close these nodes get to the center node will be where the center of this modulation takes place. And then by adjusting our center node, we can actually adjust the modulation of height from one end to the other. And this is a way that you can create sort of a, a fade that starts from a top point and fades down to the bottom of this profile relief. This is a very powerful tool because it allows you to profile any shape or vector and you can control not only the shape of the overall 3D model, but you also can adjust the transitional shape from front to end and then also the modulation or height of that overall shape using Z modulation. Now for everyone who's sort of starting off, I would highly suggest that in the beginning only using the start profile and then once you get comfortable using one modulation or variation then you get a lot more comfortable selecting the end profiles and the Z modulation. This is a quick way to create little raised shapes on their own that are independent of the overall 3D model. Great for making borders and profile shapes to any of your designs. And this is the power of the extrude tool. Before we part ways, a quick reminder to check out our discount codes in the description below for some sweet deals on your CNC essentials. If you've enjoyed this video, hit the like button, share this video, and if you really wanna join the Timberfalls journey, consider becoming a YouTube member. Membership not only supports the channel, but also brings perks like early video access, video shout outs, and an exclusive invite to a Discord channel. Your support means the world to us, and it keeps the bit spinning. Until next time, let's keep crafting, keep sharing, and let's make bit happen. See you on the next one.